we are, assignment 17, problem number 6, looking at the chi-squared goodness of fit test for normal distribution using the empirical rule. Now I'm just going to copy and paste all this over into an Excel file. Boom. We're told x bar is 5.56, the standard sample, the sample standard deviation is 2.469, sample size is 100. First step is to create our intervals. We're going to create those intervals according to the empirical rule. Refresh our memory that the empirical rule can be found on page 239. In fact, figure 6.6 .6 will be very helpful here. And here are the intervals. The shortest interval is going to be x bar minus 2s, which if we look, it's x bar minus 2s. The next interval is going to be x bar minus s, or x bar minus 2s to x bar minus s then x bar minus s to x bar, x bar to x bar plus, two, plus 1s, x bar plus 1s to x bar plus 2s, and x bar plus 2s and above. So that's the first step. Second step is to calculate the frequency. And it's not really a calculation, it's a counting. It would be really nice if we could order these, but it's kind of difficult to do that in Excel. So we just have to count the number of observations that are less than 0.622. That one's pretty easy count the number of observations between 0.622 and 3.091, etc. I'll let you do that. Make sure you hit pause because I'm going to just do it myself. Hit pause. And so those are the frequencies that I got. Make sure that they agree with yours. So this is what we observed. So I'm just going to call it OBS for observed frequencies. Next we need the expected proportions and to get these, again, we'll go to page 4, uh, no, we're going to go to page 239, uh, look at figure 6.6. .6. We do know that the middle part, those two are going to add up to 68.26%. Uh, so this one will be 0.3413, because it's half of 0.6826, and this will be exactly the same. We know that these four add up to 0.9544. We know that all of this adds up to 1. So we can do the arithmetic. And we do know that this is equal to that, and this is equal to that. So we'll just do the arithmetic. Go ahead and hit pause and do it yourself. And then when I come back, I'll have the answers. Check that your answers match mine. These are the expected proportions. What you really want is the expected counts. Well, there's 100 data points, and these are the proportions, so that's, we just need to multiply each of those by 100. So those are my expecteds, expected counts. Next step is to calculate the deviances. Deviance is just observed minus expected observed minus expected. Those are my deviances. And now we start to calculate the actual chi-squared statistic. So this, remember, is just going to be equal to the square of the deviances, observed minus expected squared, divided by expected. And then x2 is just going to be the sum of those numbers. So according to this, x2 is 4.507535. It is kind of interesting that according to the solutions, x2 is actually 4.526. Not entirely sure where they came up with that number. I've tried working this problem several ways. Um, collapsing the tables um, because you're, all, you're not observing any here and you're only observing two. Those are less than five. Doesn't quite work. Um, these two are both less than five, but that's okay. They're at least one. We've got more than four, um, four groups and the average is greater than one. So not entirely sure where they're coming up with 4.526. Um, in my defense, this version of the textbook is not the one that I fact-checked. 
Um, so chi-squared, we do need to determine what the actual um, number of degrees of freedom is. According to this, it's k minus 3. And I'm looking on page 495, the peach box. k here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's the number of intervals. 6 minus 3. So df is equal to 3. And since alpha is 0.1, according to the, uh, the problem, we'll just go to the table. The chi-squared table is table A17. We'll look for chi-squared sub 0 0.10. Um, degrees of freedom is 3. So the critical value is 6.25139. That's the CV. Because our observed test statistic is less than CV, it's not in the rejection region. Therefore, we uh, we do not reject the null hypothesis. We conclude that the data probably did come from something close to normal distribution. Now, hopefully that helped. Um, if not, let me know. I'll try something else. Um, some things, some additional things to help is here are the answers for four, six, and nine just in case they also have issues with um, coming up with the right numbers. Um, for the test statistic calculated is 9.058. For 6, which we just did, was 4.526. And for 9, it's 10.076. And I've worked these, and I've come up with numbers that are slightly different from these. Um, so there you go. I really do hope this was helpful. Uh, take care.